Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Master Trader Live. And today we're going to talk about trading ETFs and stocks with market internals. And I know it just says ETS, which is going to be part of our focus, but let's take a look at a few stocks too. So let's get going here. And here we are. So markets have been moving up for a while. We'll do a little review we can get, when we get to the charts. Dan, as always, has prepared some slides for us to get down the foundational concepts. And if you have any questions as we are going along here, of course, you're welcome to ask. That's what we're here for, to help you guys learn and share what we've learned over, over the years uh, about swing trading as it applies to ETFs, stocks, commodities. It's all about the same chart patterns, but we'll look at a few patterns. We'll look at some trends. We'll look at those ETFs and a few concepts. So that being said, I'm joined by my partner, Dan Gibby, our options specialist. And uh, how you doing, Dan? Hey, good afternoon, Greg, fellow traders. As always, we're passionate about the topics that we talk about here. And there's actually two wonderful topics here. Well, actually three. One is just swing trading, which applies to anything that moves. Uh, number two, we're gonna talk about the benefits of ETFs. And we actually have a, we have three advisory letters. And the third being the ETF investment trader both for longer term gains and swing trading them also. And then thirdly is the power of the market internals to overlay with technical analysis, which just increases the, the probability of success either to the long or short side. Yeah. So yeah, that's how we approach everything through, through the charts that tell us what's happening in multiple timeframes and, we objectively monitor those trends and look to put that all together to put the odds in our favor. And, uh, and, yeah, what, and, and, you know, we'll look at, as you said, some of the charts, but then I look forward to going uh, scanning and looking at the current market internals and we'll show you at the December low, they were incredibly oversold. Now they're overbought, which is making it a lot harder to go to the long side. And, you know, we'll show you some that we gave this week to our ETF trader, but we told them uh, it's like musical chairs. When the music stops, we, we're, we got to tighten the stops on the longs because of these market internals that, that we will show you. Yeah. And you know what, you know, the internals being where they are and they, and they got initially to there about a week ago, and now they've gone e even further and I have to check the data. Uh, because it was incredibly, the, the sentiment, the put call ratio was incredibly low this morning, down near 0.5 something or other. So I don't know whether it was bad data or whether that's real, but I'm going to check uh, later this evening at the CBOE site uh, because that has got to be close to a, a record low for, I mean, it was intraday, but still that kind of enthusiasm at this point, I guess it's normal in, in, in a market that's going up like this. And that, and that's what happens at the end where everybody feels that there's absolutely zero risk. And that's the way things are acting, you know, every little pullback, you know, and I, was, I was thinking actually today, oh, the S and P's just dropped pretty fast for some reason. I, 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 they, I'm watching them. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Dan, I, I think everybody's felt this way. And it's interesting that it's like, you know, that a bottom is close or a top is close and it gets to the point where it's like enough already, just die or just turn around. It's like, I've had enough of this trend, you yeah. know? And uh, you know, it's, but the markets never, you know, play out to our own little rhythms in, in the moment. Sometimes they do, but it, it's, it's rare. So like we get ready for the turn and, and it's like, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, you know, do it. And, uh, you know, it, it always comes, but it always pushes you to the edge of doubting that it will ever come. Well, and the, the exact thing we can say on the downside, you just said, hey, there's everything's great news, this and that. And the same on the downside, that when you're in the middle of nasty sell offs, everything, every bit of news looks bad. And you think that, that the turn, you know, won't come either. So that, that's the human emotion of fear and greed that we all 
um, you know, experience, but you'll see, wow. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to put on some bear call credit spreads on index ETFs, which we'll review here um, momentarily uh, if they close like this, that's for sure. But yeah, you know, and that's what I've been saying almost every day, Dan, is like the pre-market that, that we do is like, if it closes like this, if it closes bearishly and it doesn't, you know, one right. of the things was like how many red, even red bars have there been? during this upward trend. And there were having, you know, looking at the spiders and cues, not many. And then find one that had any real size to it down at the beginning of the move, which never formed the retest. And so for a move up that started after the correction, the way it did, not to have, you know, a retest, not to have red bars of, of any significance is unusual, is unusual, yeah. Had to be some news that I would imagine that got the market to react this way. Yeah, you don't get ugly 15 minute bars like this engulfing the whole morning's activity. No, there, there's something out there. It'll, it'll, we'll find, it'll come out. So, yeah. just a, a broad summary here uh, for those of you who have been with us for a while, uh, you know this, but just quick summary. Everybody has a different approach to the market. Here is our approach a high probability setup on multiple time frames timed with the market internals, which we're going to show you. And then you just simply enter proper position size and manage in between. We use, we're going to show you the internals, a little bit of intermarket analysis with these uh, ETFs, multiple time frame alignment. And then is it a long-term trade? And we have different uh, <coughs> time frames we look at, or is it a swing trade or even a day trade? It's the identical approach but just different time frames. Benefits of ETFs. Uh, so this is what we do in the ETF investment uh, trader. It only trades these liquid ETFs. See, the, what is an ETF? Kind of like a mutual fund. It's just a group of stocks in a particular sector or country or commodity index and you don't have to open brokerage accounts all over the world. They're, they trade here in the U.S. And instead of, uh, you know, some mutual funds, they just diversify to the S&P 500 and they don't have the expertise to find the most bullish or bearish um, components of those 500 stocks. And trading ETFs allows us to do that, um, uh, just putting our putting our money on the line with the most compelling patterns at the time. And it has significantly less uh, gap risk uh, because of that, because we're trading a whole uh, group of that's stocks. What I, that's what I like about them, Dan. It's like, you know what? Uh, it, it, there's always risk, of course, but you, you don't have the risk of an earnings report per se, you know, as it relates exactly to what, to one stock. So, that diversification reduces risk. It also reduces, quite honestly, the upside potential. You know, if you got the right stock, you know, the upside could be much greater, of course, but, you know, there's a give and take to that. And ETFs are great, you know, because look, you can be long ETFs, day trade stocks, you can day trade ETFs. They're just a fantastic vehicle, um, you know, to trade, trade around and hold on to. They're great for swings. You know. Absolutely. So this is a snapshot of, um, well, Greg, why don't you take it? Because this is part of our, of your weekend uh, routine for the advisory letter and also our ETF investment trader. Yeah. And, you know, then it's kind of fascinating, even myself, I'm doing it a long time, but, you know, updating this on a weekly basis with trends to see how the markets evolve you know, turning up or turning down to where, uh, you know, well, most things aren't green at this point because it had, takes multiple trends. I was just going to say, I should have grabbed, I should have grabbed the current one because we don't have monthly charts and up trends, right? Well, a lot of them have moved to sideways trends because of the depth of the retracement. So right. with the current one, all of the names, not all of them, but many of the names now are blue rather than being red where at the you know at the bottom near the turn the majority of them were red because you had 
monthly, weekly, and dailies in, in downtrends. And then as things begin to change, you know, this is a, a way of just seeing the broader markets as, you know, what is beginning to show relative strength or relative weakness. And as things begin to change, you know, it's just a quick way of seeing the change for our subscribers from one week to, to the next and seeing where the money's flowing into and out of. And as I, you know, just a, a quick explanation of it, which I try to make, this is one of the few things that you could really make black and white as to the analysis trend is, so we define what a swing high and a swing low is. And just simply do that by saying, here's a bar with three higher lows to the left and right. That's a swing low. And a swing high is just the opposite. And then looking at the trend or those swing highs and lows making higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows. And how does that change from multiple time frames? So, and one of the ways that we use this or subscribers use it is, let's say, for example, the monthly and weekly are in uptrends, but the daily is in a downtrend. Well, get ready for the turn on the daily because the higher time frames are going up. So that daily downtrend, so you might wait for, so the two columns there, uh, the first, let me just point to here, the first, if you can see it, let me just, there's my little pointer. So let's say the first one is last week. And so as the subscribers get the letter, this one is the, the current week or just what, what just ended. So let's assume that this is up, these are up, this was down, and now this is sideways. Get ready for that to be bought. Uh, just an easy way to see where things are changing up or down. And then, you know, what we do in the room is, you know, we look at those, but we then look at the stocks within those individual sectors that are beginning to change. Absolutely. Right. And, and that's our top down analysis, starting with the broader markets, the sectors, um, and then we drill down is, is what we say to find the best of the best and then multiple time frame alignment and timed with the uh, market internals. And here's your market internals. And, the, and this one's old, we'll show you uh, the current ones uh, here when we're done with these slides. But the, these market internals, we use them um, when they're in alignment with price action to give us the confidence that we're at a swing high or low. Uh, so we primarily look at two of them. One is sentiment, and that's looking at uh, the put call ratio. Uh, Greg calls them the wrong way option traders. And historically, when they are putting all their bullish bets on, uh, when the market is already overbought, they're typically wrong and we're looking for a reversal. That's where we are right now. But you have to wait for price action to confirm, which in today's environment right now, we're looking for a bearish reversal on the daily charts. And that's what Greg referenced a few uh, moments ago, that um, every, every small attempt to give us a bearish reversal has been negated. Um, so one, one of the things you know, that I've been asked over the years, Dan, is like, if you get the bearish reversal, what do you need the internals for? If that's, if that's your key. And the answer is that until the internals are set up bearishly or bullishly, those reversals tend to be ignored. Whereas now where the internals have reached a bearish extreme, when that reversal comes, it historically is going to be a reliable signal. Perfect. Uh, you know, so again, having price patterns is one part of our three-legged stool. The internals are another, and then into market analysis is, is the other. And when they're in alignment, well, then the odds are in our favor. And right now they're not in alignment because we don't have the bearish technical setup yet. Right, right. And that's what right, and that's what we're hoping for. And then and yeah, so um, absolutely you'll come. Yeah. And then so Brett, um, Greg looks at a McClellan oscillator and we, he puts these uh, bands around here of overbought, oversold. And it's telling us that the broader markets are overbought, oversold. Uh, currently, uh, Brett is overbought, as is sentiment. 
And you can see on the chart, we're actually showing uh, the bearish alignment. So where Greg has these uh, green circles, sentiment got too bearish on uh, look above, see this sell off? Uh, so that, this one was a fantastic example. There, there was a number of fantastic examples uh, last year that I can see on this chart. You can see the April lows in the S&P. You can see the retest. You can see the May. You can see the, uh, the June to July double bottom. Every single time the market internals were in agreement and you can see what happened to, uh, to the SPY. Then you want, once these levels are in agreement, as we've been saying, repetition is good. Then you go to the price action for your entry and management. Yeah. And the way I drew those rectangular boxes there, um, just one of them being an extreme doesn't count for to pay attention to. They both have to be in alignment. And once they're both in alignment, then we have an alignment and a signal. But just having one, that just means ignore it for now. All right. This is just showing you the uh, the SIBO volatility index, the VIX. Uh, you can't you cannot trade the VIX. You can only trade volatility ETFs or futures or options. But the only point I want to make to uh, show you here is when when the S and P sells off, you can see where all these arrows are pointing to market sell offs. Volatility rises, so that's actually another good market internal to swing trade. Uh, what this chart I'm showing you sell offs. So when these are all in alignment with our overbought market internals. It's for um, giving us a bullish signal to trade these, to swing trade these uh, ETFs, sector ETFs. That was, we've explained ETFs, we've explained market internals, the three-legged stool. We keep referencing, you have to trade a compelling pattern. I'm just showing you this slide to say, now we'll trade anything uh, compelling on, on the longer short side when we get those market internals in alignment. This is a Master Trader Live we did on January 23rd, where we uh, talked about some of our top patterns, but it's anything on the oversold internals. Now we're looking for any compelling bearish signal to trade uh, bearish ETFs, stocks, selling credit spreads. This is a slide I just want to show you as, as pictures of bullish turns. So we would be looking for pictures like this when the market internals were oversold. And I also just wanna show you how we can trade the underlying ETF as a directional trade when we get these setups, but also Master Trader loves selling uh, puts and put spreads in these type well, oversold environments when we get this bullish turn. And real simple, yeah, it's not on this slide, Sean's. And if everybody can just hit the uh, drop down to all panelists and attendees so everybody could see the questions. Sean's saying, hey, where's my bullish one, two, three pattern? Well, Sean, excellent question. That's one of my favorites. But if you look at this slide, it's here in one of my top five, the one, two, three continuation from consolidation. These are just different pictures. There's many more bullish pictures. Um, there's not enough room on this slide. But here's what we do when we sell a put spread. We find support, compelling pattern, volatility high is a plus because we get paid more for selling the put. Then we buy a further out of the money put and that's what's called a bull put credit spread. The difference of those two money, two amounts is the net credit. That's the money we put into our brokerage account and we're assuming an obligation to buy the stock at this green level of the strike that you sold. But we're using master trader technical analysis to say, I'll take that bet. That's a compelling pattern. I have oversold market internals and I'm gonna sell puts on all the beautiful ETF setups or stocks. 
uh, provided the uh, the options are liquid, of course. And once we're in the trade, then we simply just manage it in between. To us, it's just another piece of merchandise that we're trading or investing in. Again, we're gonna show you the current um, market internals when we're done with these slides. But this is one where I, um, this was a slide, I did a, a video on, on YouTube and gave it to our subscribers where I was explaining the market internals, the SPY ETF on the left, climactic buy setup, look at breadth and sentiment were off the charts in alignment of being oversold. And we'll show you the, the spiders uh, momentarily, but the reversal came on a bullish gap into that red bar. But this is a picture where we said, danger, 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 a bullish reversal is imminent. So we could still day trade short, but with a picture like this, it was too dangerous in our opinion, um, you know, to, to enter swing shorts unless you kept a tight stop on them. This is just to show you an example that when we did get that reversal in the spiders and the volatility is very high on, on that VIX SIBO volatility, the premiums that we get for selling puts and put options on these index and sector ETFs are incredibly high. And that's when, that's when we shine at, at um, both at, at extremes. So now we're, we're gonna be looking at um, shorting some out of the money call spreads on these ETFs, but it's not as juicy as doing it when the market's oversold because currently the VIX is low. Whereas this picture I'm showing you right now, look at the math of this. We, we shorted an out of the money 235 put that was $5.70 lower. And then we bought a lower put. We took in a dollar a share. Your return on capital, as long as the spider stays above that 235 strike price, was 25% return on capital. This is why we love the, this particular income strategy. This was one in February, um, markets sold off. I, I mentioned last year, there were many, many of these opportunities to sell these expensive put spreads. The spiders is on the left, uh, the volatility VXX, which is now VXXB, Bravo, because this one stopped trading after its 20 year term expired. We love selling call options on, on the VX, out of the money bear call credit spreads. So I'm just showing you this as a quick example of how um, oversold markets, we also love trading um, volatility. And for those of you that want to, to become experienced in trading volatility, using the charts, doing it professionally. We have a whole separate four hour, wonderful volatility course. You can go to mastercrader.com forward slash volatility trader. And uh, it's actually, we have that um, for a discount for you now. Let's look at these three trades that, uh, Greg, you know, it's so often that <laughs> sometimes we're, giving these and I'm staring at the market saying, I, I want to get into some trades right now, <laughs> but I know we'll have time and we have the uh, Fed minutes at 2 p.m. and who knows what's going to be in that report. Yeah, I, I, I'm interested to know what got the market going lower early and uh, the Russell actually held up pretty well, but now starting to give it up. So we'll see where it ends. I mean, we've had other days that look pretty convincing intraday and uh, didn't follow through. Right, right, um, right. These, so we're gonna show you momentarily, and we've been saying the markets are overbought and we're looking for daily signals to, uh, to short. And, but in our ETF investment trader, we gave them that warning. I gave it to you a few moments ago saying, these are in bullish alignment, so we're just going to swing trade them. 
not 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 position trade where we're holding these for months, but we use the uh, daily, weekly, and monthly time frames for for position trading, core trading. And on the on the left side is the daily, and XBI is the biotech ETF. And that was a beautiful breakout after 100% retracement. And the weekly chart on the right shows a huge bullish reverse heading shoulders. So we gave that as a swing idea. DBC is commodities. Also had a gap breakout on the daily on the left, weekly on the right, big gap down engulfing. And uh, we call, um, do you see the, Greg, if you can show them the weekly, just how it came down in such a big fluid manner. And that's what we call a price void. So this, and, and then, you know, if you want to talk about any of your um, intermarket analysis. This uh, man, someone yeah. was asking me a question on YouTube, so I'm sorry. Um, yeah, anytime you get this kind of a momentum move. So I always think, okay, define momentum. Too many people talk about things in a, a way that doesn't explain. So it's just a word, but define it in a picture. And so I would define that as just bars that open and close about in the same area and continue to move in one direction over a period of time or straight down. And then once it does that, there's no reference point to the left here to trade off of. And so when we all trade based on technicals, it's okay, I'll sell at that prior high. I'll, buy, I'll cover short at a prior low or I'll buy at a prior low. But when you have this kind of momentum move that creates this void, there's nothing to trade off of. You know, there's no clear, obvious places to trade off. It's similar to a stock making you know, new 52-week highs or new all-time highs. What are you going to say? Where am I going to sell it at? There's nothing there. So you can say, oh, I think it's extended too far and so whatever. So once prices have moved that far, we've got part of a void. And then the second part, which... This is relatively small, but, you know, there's some part of it that moves sideways that, you know, over time it creates this price void. So I come up, I come up with this concept years ago because of just there's so much on technical analysis that really leaves a void, if you will, of explanation of why prices move as they do. Uh, so when we look at what we would call price, an area of price resistance. And I would see that over to the left. And let's just kind of just look at this area over here. Oh, um, well, we've got this area. Let's just assume there was some over here and prices went up and down and whatever. And then as prices come down and they go sideways, I'd be looking at what's going on over here. And these, these moves would start and just totally ignore it. So there, you know, I was like, how could this possibly happen if there's this concept of this wall of resistance over there to the left? So as you start to study these things you, and looking at thousands of charts, you come to find that there are times where that resistance is meaningless. So is there a price void? Has it been neutralized? These are things covered in master trader technical strategies. Um, but when you have this void, there's a much higher tendency and, and odds of prices trending. And that's what we want. If prices have the potential to trend, why should I sell early? Um, so you have to understand all of that and put it all together. And, and that's what Master Trader Technical Strategy or the Swing Trading Course does, is put that all together in a condensed, easily understandable format to listen to over and over and over again. Uh, yeah, Trevor, we, oh, if you're asking about this DBC, how come I can't see the gap? The, the gap is on the daily chart. And remember, the weekly is the last five bars of data. So, and that's, so that's why the weekly chart doesn't show a gap. It would only show a gap if this was a Monday. Only if this gap was on a Monday would the weekly bar show a gap. One more here, XES, which is uh, one of the oil ETFs. 
uh, we had a failed sell setup and it's going sideways with a price void, another breakout again. It, it's not a position trade. It was just a, a, a swing trade. This is Greg's amazing swing trading course that he's talking about. And we had a special um, over the holidays uh, that we decided to honor here for you that will give you swing trading course and his advanced management strategies, AMS, for free. And they're both the same course. So you're getting two courses for the price of one. And it seems everybody loves the patterns and loves to trade, uh, but you need a proper foundation of proper risk management if, if you're going to succeed in this business. And that's exactly what um, you know, both of these courses combined does. Actually, this is an old slide, Dan. And the current special we had was the swing trading with the gap course. But since we posted that up there, those that are interested, I mean, you can get the uh, money management course at no charge. But if you prefer the gap course, I'm happy to interchange that. So if you want to be a gap, you want to trade gaps and you want a systematic method and understanding of doing that, you can exchange the gap course for the money management course. The swing trading course does have money management in it, but not to the extensive amount of information that's covered in the actual course itself. Awesome. And I, I went over what a bull put credit spread is. We obviously do um, the same on bear call credit spreads. And there's, I see some, there's been some questions on uh, Tesla here. Some, we gave a bear call credit spread this morning on Tesla, just saying, hey, it looks like a short-term top right here to Friday. Uh, you put money in your pocket and that's what we're gonna be looking to do in the broader markets right now on, on these index and ETFs and stocks. But the silver course here, uh, is, is a great, you know, get you started on selling these credit spreads with the charts. The gold package is an intense 12 module, very detailed that would get you, you know, totally off on the right track selling these. And then our platinum, pra platinum uh, package, we put together at, at requests from people saying, you know, that was awesome. Now, you know, I want to have the weekly options trader and the green trading room. So check out mastertrader.com forward slash spread trader for that. Now, I think we're eagerly ready to look at real data. Yeah, Dan, this doesn't, unless I just can't, oh, you do have it. Part of the screen I'm looking at, I don't see the, uh, the link, but anything, uh, if you need a link, just email Dan for myself, Dan at Master Trader, Greg at Master Trader. Yeah. Yeah, it's always good to just pop that in, in the room there. Um, and the swing trading course, you could just get that and uh, just place it there. All right, we ready for the charts, Dan? Absolutely. All right. making good time today. Sometimes we go a little bit too far with the slides and the explanations, but it's all good, yeah. good info, right? So this is just one of my pages that I've got set up in uh, PC2000 where I've got different scans, but this one here is just to look at all the ETFs and what this does if it's available in, in the, the platform. When I click it, you see it, it'll put all the stocks within that ETF in, in this minder and I've got a few things set up that helps me uh, distinguish where that is as far as bullishness or bearishness. And these are the, the cash uh, in, indices. And so this is, I like this screen. I, I like it a lot to use during the day where I can see the, the broader markets, where they trending up, down, sideways, and then looking at the ETFs and where they are in multiple time frames daily, weekly, this is my five minute. A lot of times I'll have this uh, as an hourly, but in any event, it, you know, so now uh, I can then go and sort this. Well, so what's moving today or not <laughs> going down? So Jets is the ETF for airlines. 
And so I think it was uh, LUV was downgraded this morning. So selling came into all the airlines. So th this sector ETF uh, is down on the day. And now, so we look at this and now start looking at it in multiple time frames. Not really, the, this doesn't trade very much on the five minute, but uh, I'd look at maybe an hourly. But the, here's a, a situation where it's trending up. The weekly, like a lot of things, are coming up into areas of resistance or forming it. Here's a nice example of a void, as you can see the momentum move. And so now as it's going sideways, it's creating a resistance area. And I really like this, Dan. Uh, and then the airlines will look at, and what I like about it is that yesterday was a bullish bar. Yeah. And that's being negated today. Uh, the gap down, we'll see where it closes, but I, I like to find setups where, you know, it's going sideways and something happens that we call a shock. So that gap down negating that bullish bar there that said this was going up and we have no reason to think it wasn't going to go up. No, but it got a downgrade today and it certainly looked like it was going to go higher. And now, no, it doesn't. And so we'll see at the end of the week whether we've got this topping tail here. And if we do, I think this is a good setup for a swing short. Right. And it, it won't collapse because you can see how the 20 is up. This is a 50. It's flat. Uh, it got above the 200. So buyers historically don't give it up as fast. Um, so it takes a little time. So, you, you know, you, you give it a stop above here. And when it may wiggle around, but it looks now like it should pull back. So we go through this process and, you know, really it starts to become common sense, which certainly doesn't guarantee that it's going to work 100% of the time, but it puts the odds in our favor and, and that's what we want. So we start going through these one by one, looking at the charts at the end of the week. You know, this will tell me the last five days. But then at the end of the week, I'll sort this and say, well, what did the best? Oh, gasoline. So from that, if gasoline is doing well, oil is doing well. Well, and this is this is really, I guess what Dan would call something, something. Is, is that this looked like a no brainer short last week as this was rolling over these, e, these ETFs or bear call spreads. And now it's just totally negated, which opens up the door to possibly a measured move higher. Uh, and one of the things we talked about, I think with pre-market, we're in, in the room early this morning, was the concept of bringing up the rear. And what that means is sectors that underperformed near the end of a bull cycle tend to outperform. And so oil, uh, has that set up right now, as does, I didn't look at what they're doing today, but retailing. So this was another sell type of setup that didn't trigger and it turned it around. So, and retailing and oil may be the sectors that bring up the rear now in a market that is extended and near some resistance and the internals are telling us that there's risk on the long side. Now, whenever there's risk on the long side and the broader markets are likely to stall or move lower, you always have to think, well, what are the probabilities of a stock or a market now bringing up the rear at this point in time? It can happen, but ideally we're looking for the majority of concepts that we look at to be in alignment. Of course, the more that are in alignment, the greater the odds that are in our favor. And so, again, we just go through these. All the oil sectors here are up and look like they'll continue to move up. Uh, they've got voids to continue to do that. And, and telecom, not interested in telecom, even though it's up because uh, it's up near resistance. Uh, the marijuana stocks acting pretty well. Uh, Tilray. Was that uh, an upgrade today, Dan? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, we were looking at that for a put spread. Tilray. Okay. 
and then the sector is MJ. Right, that's what we have up here. Okay. XLE is just another oil-related ETF. And well, that's part of the process of just going through looking at all of these um, semiconductors coming up toward the resistance. And again, resistance is an area. And we've got there and... You know, does it go to the top of the resistance area or does it stop at the bottom of the resistance area? Nobody knows, but this way we just continue to follow the trend and so far it's just continuing to trend higher. But the odds are growing that this trend, which has been extremely strong, is getting closer to ending than continuing. And uh, Tony would like to look at Canada, e EWC. So I've got another page for those, um, the country ETFs. So it cleared its, its 200 today. And, and does it go to the top or does it stop at the bottom? No. So let, let's go to that page in a second. I'll switch pages here. And so here are the country funds. And same process. What is up the most? And today it's CHN, China fund. So being the best performer on the day doesn't mean it's a buy. It, this, these minders are starting points and being able to sort by percent change on the day, over five days, over the course of the year, we could be looking at this over the course, we could say, what did the best over a month, three months, six months, and so on. Uh, and then trying to looking for, we look at the charts and say, okay, what's the likelihood of this continuing? We look at multiple time frames. there's India, and we want to look at Canada, right? We we're looking at Canada coming up into resistance, right? Germany. So, you know, as I'm looking at this, uh, you know, these ETFs that are severely underperformed, maybe they bring up the rear. Maybe some of these country funds are uh, the place to be. But this one, you know, you could go with a more diversified fund and I like the monthly here and the negating of this topping tail. Um, so Euro stock 50 is one to consider. And this one is actually, I guess, hedged against the dollar. Um, the currency yeah, we, exposure. Yeah, we put that on the ETF letter as a watch. Yeah. Mm. And so GBTC Bitcoin one. Right. Bitcoin had that big move yesterday. Um, so the futures were trading. So it was a big wide range bar versus this gapping up into this area of resistance. So, you know, everyone look at what Dan and I have been showing you. No trend lines, no envelopes, no indicators. And you see the accuracy of where prices turn price support price resistance no fibonacci levels no extensions none of the hocus pocus this simple approach works and it doesn't confuse you with all the squiggly lines and so consider getting all of the lines the indicators off your charts and that's what i did 25, 30 years ago, just getting so frustrated with all of the holy grail hocus pocus stuff and just saying, you know what, I'm not making any money with it. So why continue with this craziness? And when I took all of that off the charts, it was like, this was like the first things I looked at. Why did I spend all this time? That's because this is what this industry does. And when I started out, there was no internet, but the books said the same thing. 
So you go to all these webinars today and you see their proprietary indicators and trend lines and bands and so on and so forth. And you just, you'll spend money on all of that stuff and probably eventually just throw it away and you'll either give up or you'll come to the KISS method, right? <laughs> keeping it simple, right? I'm just any questions, Dan, that we need to address here? Uh, no, I've been doing some, but do you want to show them the market internals also? Well, I'd have to bring up the other platform that is up behind me, um, which I guess just the screensaver just went on. But um, this platform stopped updating the put call ratios, which were here. But, you know, I, I go over this every morning um, in the green room. And it's shown on YouTube every morning where you could see it. Uh, but this is up at a bearish level. And we can, and what I explained this morning was the fact that, you know, there is internal deterioration or just stocks that are not moving up with the same degree that the market is. So this breath internal is making lower highs and lower lows while the market is making, you know, higher highs. That's actually an hourly chart, but um, just switch it to daily. Now, so as this market has continued to move up, there's a lot of stock showing some internal deterioration here. Right? So the market historically, the market always masks weakness that's underlying. Um, and how do you know that? You'll probably own a stock that's getting smashed. <laughs> and when the, you won't know the internals have turned bearish, but I call it accidents beginning to happen. And all of a sudden these stocks begin to get shellacked and you know, the markets are still going up and you might be scratching your head saying, the markets are so strong. Why is this stock doing this? Or you see other stocks that are doing it. And it always happens that individual stocks got taken out to the woodshed and beaten up. And then, you know, eventually the market turns around. CC, we can take a look at that. Let me switch to my prior screen. This company has been around a long time, Trevor, and has been part of controversy over the years, multiple times. I remember this name. Uh, actually, I haven't looked at it in years, but kind of surprised that it's still around based on what I remember of the past. Um, big move, big move down. I wonder if it even changed the name. That this, the symbol used to be something else. I'm pretty sure that symbol used to be something else. You, you know, you're right. Because I think a CC was Circuit City. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yes, yes. But there was something with this name that I remember more data being available. In any event, right. um, you know, it's moved up with the market. You know, it's moved up with the market, but it hasn't recovered as much as the market and a lot of other stocks that came in like this. It's more in alignment where a sell signal would likely take it back down again. And it's right at the 200 MA on the daily. That's the red line right there, that moving average, which is widely followed. And you can see directly across from it with those crosshairs, right? it's right in alignment with resistance. So just because a moving average is widely followed like a 200, look to the left and see if it's in alignment with actual price. Right. So, big gap up, right. it just closed a big gap up, I guess, intraday here. I'm not sure. In any, in any event, it's not, it's not something that uh, we would go long at this point in time. Right. Walmart. Walmart got shellac today. 
And yeah, yesterday we were watching it as a bear call credit spread. We love selling options um, on when volatility is high, on gapping stocks, earnings, news. And that was one since, and somebody actually just asked me, Sam, and maybe Greg, you can uh, add to, to my answer. He was just asking the difference between uh, gaps. How do you, in simple terms, he's saying, how do you know when there a gap is starting a move versus ending? And I typed in, you know, we have igniting gaps from consolidation and then a big gap in an already extended uh, move is more of an exhaustion gap. So I was looking at Walmart yesterday of a short term exhaustion gap if the intradays gave us a bearish setup. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened. But yeah, he he wants to look at FCX. That's uh, that's the gap trade he asked me about a few minutes ago. Well, so well, this this was a good gap trade setup yesterday. Today it, it isn't. I mean, it's pulling up into 200, but what made it a good gap trade yesterday? Well, a few things. And this is the kind of information covered in the gap course, if you're interested in that. The day before yesterday was a topping tail. And so you got a bearish close. It's at resistance and it gapped just above it. It wasn't a huge gap clearing it. It just cleared it. And so this is where you can go down to your five minute chart or even a, even a two minute in the morning. And you know, we look at information like what was it doing at the, the prior day? Um, and again, I'm going a little more detail here than probably I should, but two minute charts, 180 type of reversal and such. So we look at different patterns as to how to uh, play these gaps and you know, as a starting point, what makes this a good gap versus this not as good a gap? Right. Just like every every pattern comes in different flavors and, and compellingness. So, yeah, Greg came up with a seven point uh, ranking system for quality of the gaps. The more points, the more quality quality it is. Exactly. Exactly. So. Right. If markets are why uh, Russell holding up the best here, but clearly we've got some bearish price action here intraday. We'll see where this ends up at the end of the day. Do we have another red bar? I mean, it's a little tiny baby bars that we have going on here, um, but we need something convincing. Right? Like a close under a prior day's low to really believe that this market's ready to turn. Our internals are telling us it's ready. It's at resistance. We need, I call it an event. Dan calls it something, something. And uh, once it's we right, get something, that. Right, something, right, material. And, and, and the, there's different flavors of what that means. It could be a gap up. And engulfing, closing at the low, it could be a big old topping tail. It can be what we call an upside shakeout. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but that's what we mean. We we need an event and intraday. I like what's going on right now. Yeah. But we have Fed minutes at, at two p.m. Eastern and an hour. Who knows how we're going to close? So a little short kind of way of knowing: is it an event? Is it is it something? Imagine yourself in the trade and you're long and the day before you're like high five in your friends or yourself. You're a genius. It looks fantastic. And the next day you're saying, Oh my God, what happened? That's an event. Right. So sure. whatever, whatever it looks like, we can tell you so many different ways of explaining it. But if you just think about it that way, you'll know it's something. Right? If, it, <laughs> if it's like, oh my God, what happened? Why? If you're going to check the news to see what's going to save the day, you've got something, an event there. <laughs> so uh, in terms of, do you use McClellan Oscillator or Summation? McClellan Oscillator, Sean. Summation is a long-term McClellan 
it moves at a turtle or a snail's pace. It's really not necessary. And I've looked at many, many internals over the years, had a very extensive course on all types of internals and sentiment and so on. And over the years, I've gravitated toward using two. A put call ratio with a five period moving average of the closes uh, with static levels, envelopes, and the McClellan oscillator. And if the both of them are in agreement, everything else is close to being in agreement or, or has already gotten into agreement. So you don't need to look at a million things. Um, you look at the two, those two things as explained and uh, you'll know when everybody else is looking at their own internals that are gonna be giving them a similar message. Last one, CVS. And by the way, all of these scans and uh, pages, if you use TC2000, when you become part of Master Trader, they become available to you at no charge. Ugly gap down today. Rally up into the 200. There must have been some news. Earnings, yeah. That looks ugly. So what does it do here? Does it actually survive an incredible event? <laughs> Right, a, a huge gap down like that and begin to rebuild, that would be bullish. But if it goes sideways here, let's just say for a week or longer, all right, go side, it doesn't automatically go down. But if it can't rally from here or begin to repair this damage, well, odds are it's going to go lower because you can see where it's at here. So it's at a very important level. And if, if it cannot, get turned around and turn this into a W pattern. And the market doesn't support that possibility, really. You know, these patterns with a market that's oversold or having been corrected for a while and then getting stabilization, that supports this turning around. We don't have that right now. No, it doesn't look good. Would you have shorted CVS below the first five minute candle? Well, if it went down after five minutes and went down a lot, yes. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but no, it never broke the five minute bars low. Well, and secondly, for me, I, I would say the gap's too excessive. I want more information. So I would at least wait 30 minutes myself because of the gapping the support. If it gap under support, then I would be more inclined to short the five minute low. Absolutely. And let's show you something because look, excessive with gaps isn't always a reason to shy away from them because this is the gap page that comes with the course. Uh, so all the gaps here and you can then sort this, you know, um, and what you find is a lot of times these ones that have these big gaps they continue to move in the direction of the gap. The point is to get into them at an appropriate time. So a gap, someone asked on YouTube, uh, does a gap, is it the same as a void? It's similar. Uh, it, create, it creates a void. So now there's nothing to trade against with the gap. So what we need to see intraday for it to create some overhead resistance on a gap down and with a gap up. So here's a gap up, gapped up almost 7%, 6.5%. And look at that move. So again, it, it gapped above a consolidation, it gapped above a red bar, a lot of going for it there. It cleared all of this resistance. And that's a nice gap setup. So. All right, I think it got back. Bear put spread on it, uh, Got If CVS got back to $80, well, you know, I don't know about if, if it got back to $80? 70. That's so not gonna. 70. Oh. <laughs> that's not if good. it got back to $70, I think that would be a short term miracle. It, you know, it, it may eventually. Right, yeah. and, and just to, what Aetna, you know, whatever's going on here, they're digesting that company, who knows? But uh, look, anything's possible. Right now, for me, it says stay away. 
Right. And, and just as an aside, before we uh, wrap up, uh, last weekend, we sent out a chart of the week talking about these uh, bullish or bearish gaps being quickly negated in the first hour. Those are, are and, and, you know, we give you a lot of examples and we tell you how to trade those when you have a price voice. Um, so go, you know, go, go to our website and you can check out that chart of the week. And it's on these bearish gaps negated. All right, Dan, that's a wrap. I've got to get back to the green room, open that up, and uh, be back in there for the Fed minutes. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. Good trading, everyone. Thanks for coming. Email us if, with any questions and take your trial to the green room if you're not already in. Uh, MasterTrader.com forward slash green trial. Have a good week, everyone. We'll see you next Wednesday.